This is my brown and sharp number zero horizontal milling machine. It was made around 1910. I have the original vise, swivel vise. The patent dates go up to 1903. Today's video is not about the milling machine, but rather about this boring head. I was very lucky to find this boring head at a tool sale. It's a Flynn boring head. It has some nice features. It receives half inch and five eighths shank boring bits in the top and in the side. It receives 5 eighths bits and also half inch square, which are both compatible to the same size. The screw is graduated in diameters, so it has 50 divisions, but the screw has 40 threads per inch, which is the same as a micrometer. So each one of these divisions is measured in diameter and not radius. When I bought this boring head, it came with this shank, which is it's a rather unusual thread. It's a 1 and 7 16 12 thread. So the shank that it came with is a three-quarter straight shank. And of course I have this end mill holder that this works on in, but this is certainly not ideal because the tool just extends too far out. So what I'd like to do today and the subject of this video is to make a new shank for this boring head that will screw into this and also have the number 9 brown and sharp taper like this. In case you don't know, a number 9 brown and sharp taper is a little bit bigger than a Morse 3 and a little bit smaller than a Morse 4. However, on a brown and sharp taper, the taper is one half inch per foot as opposed to a Morse taper, which is around 5 eighths per foot. So what we need, ideally, would be this.
before I tapped the hole, I reamed it with a 60 degree center reamer. Some people call this a 60 degree countersink. It's actually a center reamer and it's designed to prepare the hole to receive a 60 degree center which is what we're going to do next. Alright, the first phase is done. The brown and sharp, number 9, taper. It came out a little too long. This seemed like the easiest way to shorten it. 
the milling machine is a lathe. Now that I've set up the threading tool, I'm ready to set the gears in the threading stop. The first thing is to put the lathe in back gear. So I disengage that pin and engage the back gears. This is the famous Norton gearbox, the first successfully mass-produced quick-change gearbox. It cuts 36 different threads. We need to find 12 on the chart. And that's right here. So we follow that over to the side that says hole number two. So we're going to put this in number two, and from the 12, we follow this down along this line to that hole. So we need to be in there. Now we're set up for 12 threads per inch, running in back gear and we engage the half nuts here. That starts the carriage moving 12 threads per inch. Fortunately 12 threads per inch is an even multiple of the pitch of the lead screw which is six. So every time we engage the half nuts we know we'll be synchronized. Here's the threading stop. I'm going to bring this up close and bring this out. The hook comes up And the stop, stop rod is tightened here. So now I have a threading stop. I can back out of the cut, go back to the beginning, and advance to that stop each time.